Hey everybody, it's your monster back again with Opus Gaming, and I'm here today to bring you guys my Wurple Axe Fighter deck that I took to this past weekend's Grand Open in Ohio. Uh, the event was super, super fun, and I finished the event X3 getting 79th place, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I had such a good time at the event, and all of my opponents were super, super fun. I had some crazy intense matches that either came down to like last card in deck, uh, top decking, just playing out these crazy, crazy matches, but we'll get in more uh, into a deep dive of uh, each of my matches at the end of the deck profile, but I just wanted to bring you as the deck because i think that uh the archetype in general is kind of like finding its way into the meta and shout out to everybody that was on a version of like white purple axe fighter i heard about so many different variations kind of leading up to the event and then getting there i played against a lot of people who, that said that they also played against another version of a uh, white purple axe fighter so i want to bring you guys my version and talk a little bit a uh, little bit about my choices and stuff so before i get too deep into the deck profile i'm talking a lot about the deck because i have a lot to say about Whirlpool. but uh you guys already know we're on our way to a thousand subscribers so once we hit that we're going to be doing a big giveaway giveaway details will be down below but if you guys are just here to support leave a like leave a comment and let's get into this deck profile because this i love this deck I wanted to separate the deck profile portion of the video out into the two separate engines that run the deck, which is going to be the white and the purple stuff. We're going to start off with the purple engine and the low to the ground stuff. So we have three Beldegore and we've got four Dragonaga Assassin. Dragonaga Assassin is actually my favorite purple card that I have in the deck. It does so much for it. It helps with the early game. It gives you a starter card. It gives you a consistent draw with the soul core, but it also just constantly threatens your opponent's uh, medium sized spirits or spirits that they just don't want to sacrifice off the board if they're forced out of attacking because you, you know, maybe pop to suppression or just any other battle tricks that can end your opponent's turn pretty early so i love having the dragon aga assassin it can come out in the early or the mid game and then in the late game it really comes out and shines against white aggro so it just provides a lot and it helps uh keep your hand really healthy so this is one of the cards that i really needed to uh fix out some of white's issues which is just not having that draw engine but also not having like a really consistent way to push out early and uh early and mid game aggression against decks that you do have to close out a win against right because they can't go too far things like purple so next up we have beldegore this card comes in to really help up with the with the red matchup obviously it is threatening with their star blessed draw but honestly sometimes you just have to go for it clearing a body off the board is honestly so important and you can't be too frightened of star blessed draw to not take the advantage when you can if your opponent plays out an early like dynoman or a bearded eagle and they start swinging and you can punish it with a beldegore you usually need to do that so beldegore came in and was really really useful i kind of used it for for one reason it does kind of it does help float off of fours and fives but only every once in a while it was more so just to clear out my opponent's uh, early aggressive cards Mordred is a card that came in and overperformed when my opponent didn't have one summon punishes. That's kind of the big thing. This card is so fantastic at a five cost and it comes in and does so much. But if your opponent can punish you properly with a with a star blessed or anything like that, and we're gonna be seeing a lot more of those going forward in the sideboards. So it's just something something to think about. But this card does clear boards like no other, especially aggro boards. So Purple having this and having access to Mordred just helps push the tempo and it helps you kind of uh, regain board board establishment, right? Next up, we have Cur Curse Dragon combo. This came in and is the reason that you have a chance against uh, a lot of decks, right? So you can clear out your, your opponent's armored dragon ship. If your opponent is trying to like wall up and stop you from being able to bounce their things, these, these two cards come down in combo in the late game and can just just win you games uh this card alone just won me my round uh i think it was round two my opponent just slammed down an armored dragon ship it was had one core on it because he had to spend all his other cores and everything else had one core and i had nine cores exactly so i just sac sacrificed my axe spider i sacrificed my gray armor that i had played the two turns before and i went into a uh infernal king curse dragon i won so these cards can just win you games and they give you outs against other decks that you don't sometimes have outs to comboing the curse or the dark bishop baculus with a dark knight more that you already have on board too is another real threat so all of them are really powerful it's really nice but it, it's also unfortunate that you're uh, so so vulnerable to uh to when summon triggers and the number one card that i that made me want to play purple so i could get some reductions on is uh netherworld depths this card doesn't come out in the early game but it does come out in the mid game and it can really force your opponent to slow down if your opponent slow, swings too many times in the early game and you slam another world depths and it's like a and it's a aggro focus focus deck they're gonna have to be switched over to like more of a mid-range deck if they're not wanting to give you a whole bunch of cards to deal with their board it's been it performed overperformed for me honestly in the tournament i drew so many cards off this and it got me into a place where i had multiple suppressions when i needed them i had multiple axe biters when i needed them so this card is another big draw engine and it does fix one of purple's big problems the biggest issue with this card is burning force uh existing it's really hard to manage the time when you can play that efficiently and not get 
uber punished by a burn burning force. So that's one thing to think about. But next up, we're getting into the white low to the ground stuff. So we've got one uh, heavy. We'll talk about the three costs. We got one heavy curiosity, and then we've got hollow beast glass bear. Hollow beast got blast glass bear comes in as a two of it was originally at four of and a really big mainstay of the deck the issue with it with trading with your opponent's uh, cards constantly was that you never got full reduction set up on your board and it was kind of hard when you have so many big like five and six cost cards it does help you get there where you're you're maintaining your life and you're ramping cores but you're you are losing out on the body so playing it as a two of and when i slam this i know that i'm losing it on the next turn and that's kind of where it exists but it's still a good card uh to do that right because it can get you into course you can play things like elephant earlier or things like buff long bill and get those established on the board next up i play a one of heavy tank curiosity honestly i only had space to fit one of this card if i could i would play it as a two of but this is was in there for the purple matchups when i did see them i wasn't sure how popular it was going to be but it actually ended up being i think out of nine rounds, I played five of them that were purple. So this card actually came in and put in a lot of work. I wish it was at two of, honestly, but that's just something to also think about with uh, with the list here. I'll adjust these. Oh, perfect. They're already good. We're going to get into the four costs now because these are some of the most important and I actually have so much to talk about with these. We have Axe Spider at three of now. I do wish I played this at four of because it's just so consistent and nice to see. It's another card that you want to open in your first hand as well. And I wasn't sure how many times I wanted to open it, but the answer was all the time. Um, so I do wish I had played four of this. I swapped it out to kind of get a little bit more room for a little bit more diversity. But Axe Spider was just the craziest card in my deck all weekend. So defensive and my entire defensive lineup is kind of set up around usually having an axe biter so having this card is super crazy but gray armor was fantastic i did love gray armor i did play it originally for the white aggro matchup and i didn't play against any white aggro actually but having uh, armor white is a really nice contrast to having the axe biter so if they can't properly out the axe biter right by combat and stuff if you can pump up the gray armor enough this is totally fine because it's not susceptible to a dream bomb so going into games two and three especially when i think my opponent's going to bring in a dream bomb if they saw the axe biter combo and they didn't just get aggroed out by the purple side of the deck gray gar gray armor came down in the early game so i'll slam a um maybe an axe biter on turn one or a gray armor in turn one wait a couple turns core up the one of them and then kind of switch it over to have both of them on the, on the board and that's kind of how i uh dealt my defensive sequencing and it was fantastic all, th all the way through the weekend with how much purple i played though i wasn't able to be aggressive with axe by or with gray armor like i normally am a lot of times i'm able to turn all of my cards sideways and then kind of uh rebuttal things back on my opponent's side or on my opponent's turn but not being able to do that against purple was rough so i wish i had played a two gray armor and a two pega scion split and then just played one gray armor and one pega scion in my sideboard so i could switch between three and two of each uh and i just wouldn't ever play this in the purple matchup this got sided out every purple but that was totally fine because the rest of my deck uh, kind of dealt with purple so well so that was one of the weak points for the weekend but i i couldn't have predicted playing five purple i know i was going to play a lot of it but i thought i was going to play more terrace Next up, I have Ice Blade Brigid. Brigid. This is obviously in for the Pterosaur matchup, but it's not just fantastic against Pterosaur. It does combo really well with Beldegore. Uh, the general combo is when you have the two cores on it with the Soul Core on it, it can block uh, a Gagano Rex, for example. It'll lock the Gagano Rex, Rex. It'll die, bounce one of your opponent's like three costs that maybe haven't attacked yet or another three cost card. And then you can bring out a Beldegore if they have another card that is already uh, tapped down for the turn. Or if you just need a blocker for the turn, so it's really nice in that sense. Uh, it does double really well with uh, cards like Regain and Holy Elixir too. And when you do have Buffalong Bill on the board, you can use this card as a when attacking way to suppress down your opponent's early uh, Gigano Rex. So if your opponent slammed a Gigano on, let's say like turn two or three, and they swung into you, and you have uh, this card in hand, or you have a Buffalong Bill that's already on board, but maybe it's sideways already. Uh, when you slam this card, you, you can core up your Buffalong build, swing with this card, and lock down your opponent's Gigano Rex. That way it won't unsuspend on the next turn, and they won't have as much already on board aggression you can really slow down the tempo so that's just some of the combos and some of the reasons why i played brigade but brigade ended up being really fantastic in so many matchups it also helps slow down some of the uh white curse aggro builds as well so uh next up we have the buffalo build this card came in as a two of and i actually think that that's, this is the perfect ratio i was playing it at three of for a really long time but the problem with it being at three of is that it always costs four 
Uh, always casting four is a little bit rough, but it always turns on its bounce effect uh, right away at level one. So there is trade off, but it comes in and it combos really well with things like the Brigid, which is nice. And it helps you uh, kind of push an aggro mid and late game. So if you were really aggressive with a Dragon Naga in the early game and your opponent's trying to wall up with some of their cards, you can play out the the Buffalong Bill, swing with Curse, so they have to sac right, sacrifice cards on board already, get your draw from the Curse, maybe swing with another Curse that doesn't get a draw, but then you turn a, a Buffalong Bill sideways, bounce something on their board, so now they they just have one less blocker and they're dealing with all the attacks. And then you combine that with something like Suppression, where you can buff up Buffalong Bill to be a pretty decent size at 11k, and then start bu uh, bouncing some of your opponent's smaller boards. And Buffalong Bill com combos with all of the magic cards and all of the defense, but Buffalong, it was a really odd nice card as a two of next up we have dual gun mech lord derm dyna this card came in as a one of it was fantastic it definitely performed in the purple matchups and all of the curse matchups this card combined with dream bomb versus maduke is just is just board breaking if they swing with a small curse card you bounce the maduke and you block with this card the curse will still go through as regular curse their curse card will die but then you just get another blocker so this card is actually my mvp and i think it was around either five or six where I was just playing off the top of my deck. I was just, I was dead to rights, but I was able to slam a Durham Dyna, stall out for two more turns. I went down to one life, and then I had like a a dream bomb to bounce his Madu back to hand, about block his two cursed attackers, and then go back into my turn, and I was able to win off that. So Durham Dyna is really, really nice. Um, and then we have the two eight drops. Realistically, the armored dragon ship should have just been another uh, Newman guard because this card got swapped out in almost every single game too to the eight drop Newman guard, but it was in here to protect the Axe Spider against Dream Bombs and other white decks. I wasn't sure how many people were going to be on the white to white counter for bouncing the Axe Spider for a really uh, aggressive defensive turn, but it ended up uh, only coming in I think like one game against white, but it wasn't too it wasn't too crazy important. Newman Guard on the other hand was fantastic all day. I really like slamming it, and there was so many times where it came in as either the only card on my board or the second card on my board, and it just overperformed. So when I'm going going into the late game, I'm able to just switch into a super aggro push turn because I'm able to just refresh all my cores and refresh all my cards with the Newman Guard. So. All right, getting into the MVP of the deck, the card I've been talking about the whole time, which is going to be, we'll just talk about Suppression by itself right away. Suppression is crazy. It combos super well with Brigid. It's combos super good with Buffalong Bill. Obviously, it's perfect with an Axe Spider, but using all those different cards uh, and Greg Armor as well, using all those different ways and being able to block in the flash step is just so important because it's such a nice battle trick when your opponent's already committed to putting a card um, sideways on their board so it can't block on their next turn, as well as trying to get into your life and then use suppression to get rid of a body on the board and then wall out a certain many, a certain number of attacks on their side of the board, right? And that's uh, really important. So suppression was definitely the most important magic card. I did put this card to, I think it was at a uh, three of in one of my lists, but I think that playing it as a four of is definitely the right, right decision and I'm super happy that I switched. Getting into more of my white battle tricks, we have three regain and two holy elixir. These cards are super good to surprise your opponent in the same way that suppression is. They're already committed to an attack, so we're resetting things like Axe Spider to trade with 5Ks or less, or just to wall out big Maduke attacks. And then we're also resetting things like Buffalong Bill. So if we have a board of only two creatures, we're able to turn both of them sideways, force our opponent to try to out them in the main step. Or if they do go into their their battle step, they have a chance of possibly hit, or just having to run into one, right? And it is really nice chaining things like if you have the extra cores, you can chain a regain, restand one of your bigger spirits, right? So they think that you don't have the suppression, deal the block, get the kill, and then when they uh, swing in again because you didn't use suppression on the first attack, that's when you use the suppression to get the extra body off the board, and then you still wall out the rest of their attacks for the turn. So using these cards in succession as battle tricks is a super cool way to abuse not only Axe Spider invulnerability and un uh, inability to die on the board but also just using like things like buffalong build to bounce more more cards on their side of the board uh, using things like hollow beast glass bear to continue ramping or just like getting a Beltagore restood so you can sack it, get into the grave, and then uh, block with a Brigid to bring back out that Beltagore, right? So you have some pretty cool combos that you can do with the white magic cards. Dream Bomb came in in the main deck as a three of, and this is the perfect number of Dream Bomb to have. It does crack a board 
like no other card when you're playing against a kind of like a mid range or a control deck. If you're playing against purple and they do a netherworld depth setup in the mid game and you have a dream bomb set up and they swing with something like a dragon naga just to start getting that extra that extra value, you could but you can pop your dream bomb, get rid of the netherworld depths that they just spent all their cores to summon, and then get rid of a blocker on their side of the board. So now you can be super aggressive. They can't afford to play their magic cards properly. And then you have a, a swing turn essentially in your in tempo in your way. So Dream Bomb came in as kind of the main removal target, and I wanted something that could hit Axe Spider and just really punish my opponent for for playing those cards that don't have uh, armor white. So Dream Bomb was fantastic. Next up, I have Infinity Mothership. Uh, this card is kind of the, the main staple of the deck that brings back all your cores so you can be super aggressive on your main turn. You can spend all your cores going wide, knowing that you're going to have cores coming back, and it pairs really well with your Axe Spider. Turns on your ramp so you can get into your late game Newman Guards and your Armored Dragon step and your dragon ship and things like that but it also makes it so that you can aggressively and uh, efficiently get to your curse dragon combo so uh infinity Dr mothership was actually just really good i don't have anything negative to say about it, it never underperformed and it was just always a super good card so uh for absolute ice shield we are playing battle spirits so yeah, you have to play four of it, especially in a deck that doesn't kill your opponent right away. And then the last two cards are Burning Force. I felt like I did want to get this card into the main. There was a long time where I was playing no Nexuses in this version of the deck, and I was only playing uh, Dream Blizzard. Dream Blizzard is going to make its way back into the main deck of this, for sure, because it's just such a versatile card. But um, I love I love Burn Burning Force. There were some times I used it to stop my opponent's super aggressive turns, but for the most part, it was just removing Netherworld, Netherworld depths for me all day, and just really keeping my opponent off the board that they want to set up, so. For the most part, this main deck performed for me really well, but let's get into the side deck really quick and talk about some of the choices that I made for that. All right, getting into the sideboard here, I do have a, I think I swap in like eight cards against a, two different matchups, the Pterosaur matchup, and I also swap eight cards in against uh, purple, purple, just anything. So those are just something to note when you're kind of looking at this deck profile, but or this uh, sideboard, but we're going to start off with Dream Blizzard. This card is a card that I felt like I needed in some place in my in my uh, main and sideboard. I didn't make it into the main, but I did want to play one of it in the side, and it came in in so many games and so many matchups that I think that's why I think it's going to go back into the main. So many decks are focused on setting up Nexuses, and you can punish things like double Netherworld depth setup, or if your opponent is... If your opponent's like bricking or something like that, and they're just slamming slamming nexuses over and over again, hoping to get value on the one spirit that they have in turn in hand, and you hit like a three nexus or a three or four nexus board with a dream blizzard, that can just win you the game. So that was just really important for me to include. Next up, we have two full of for the purple matchup as well. This card came in in every single purple matchup, so that was uh, really really nice. Next up, we have the one extra Newman guard, and this card was I knew I wanted more of it, but I just wanted to do a one one split. And for the games that I wanted the extra Newman Guard, or that I thought that the Dragon Ship was just too much and not enough value, uh, Newman Guard came in. So that's why I think that it's going to be switching out to the main deck as well. After that, we have Snowflake, and this card was amazing because it doubled against the red and the purple matchup, so it could come in in great value in the deck, or inconsistently in the side deck, but I really like uh, Snowflake, and it doesn't cost too much, it doesn't cost a lot to kind of establish it onto the board, and in a situation where you think your opponent is like, if they're playing red and you think they're going to be punishing you so, you so much with when summon uh, triggers, you swap out some of your when summons to go into your Snowflake, -ins, and it's a really easy one-to-one -one swap, so Snowflake and, uh, really performed in that sense for sure, and getting into some of the purple cards here we have cord or core drain and bloody rain bloody rain was in for anything aggressive and it came up all through the tournament it was so consistent and very very nice shout out to my teammate matt riley for putting on how consistent and how good this card is it really does wall your opponent out of a super early like two three turn um kill and for this game or for this deck i really really ramp into the mid game that's my best my best part of the game is going into the mid game i get to decide when i get to kill my opponent with things like regain and i get to decide how defensive i can be with things like off suppression so having this card wall my opponent out of being able to kill me super early on the turns like one and two because they can't put one core on everything or setting this card up to go into an infernal king dragon is uh is a really nice combo and then we have the core drain this is another card that comes in as a direct swap for things like mordred against red red 
matchups because red matchups are going to have star bus draws so you don't want to have as many one summons but you still want to have just as much removal so core drain coming down removing three cores from arrested spirit is crazy consistent you don't have to always remove things on your opponent's flash step because you do want to ramp some of your life to your main core pool so you can set up a board that's un unbreakable for your opponent and then just whittle down one card one card one card at a time until your opponent just doesn't have any more cards left to and you can just kind of go through and finish killing your opponent or they just don't have enough resources to stop your your wave of attack so cordrain was really nice because it didn't stop my consistency with uh purple removal but it did help me fix some of the issues which is relying on the one summon so talking about the tournament a little bit more i had a, just so much fun my rounds were um round one we did actually take a round one loss versus yellow which is super super unfortunate i did think that i was i just wasn't piloting my deck to the best of my ability it was my first time technically playing this version of the of the list because i did build it um right before my plane so my flight got delayed so i had to build my list out um like by Ubering home, building out my list, submitting my list because I wasn't landing in Ohio until after midnight when the deck lists were already submitted. So I ended up building this deck and making all a lot of the purple changes in the main and the sideboard kind of last second. So there were some things I weren't familiar with with the interactions versus yellow, but that was unfortunate. I lost that one 0 to 2. So that was a pretty rough start to the day. But going into round two, I did get the win versus a what I thought was white aggro, but it ended up being a Turbo Rex like control deck. So he was being super aggressive with things like regain and and summoning things like bullet ray and just getting early chip damage which is something that i can do as well but we're kind of just going back and forth i'm chipping with purple but he's chipping with white cards so i'm thinking that like if i set you know set up like the axe spider with the um with the suppression i'll be super super good and then he just drops like a turbo rex out of nowhere and it was it was a really interesting match but i was able to take it uh 2-0 so Going into round three, this is going to be the start The start of how when I learned that this deck just slaughters against purple. Um, I played against a purple player. I won that one 2-0, and it was it was just very, very straightforward. Your deck has a, Their deck has a very difficult time removing your board, and when you can devalue things like um, Curse Dragon combo, that's the biggest, biggest advantage that you have. So slamming down things like Axe Spider, walling out their curse attacks, getting certain cards off their board one card at a time while your board continues to survive and build up, and then you have things like Dream Blizzard, Burning Force, to respond to like their Nexuses and their wide boards. Uh, Buffalong Bill is another card that comes in and does crazy work against that. You just have so many things that work against them that it's really hard for them to survive. So I say that, but going into round four, I played purple and I actually lost. This was against Curse Purple Aggro. And it, uh, the game went to game three and it was kind of a pretty straightforward way to lose a game. I had one Ice Shield. I set the Ice Shield. It was like turn two. I ended up setting the Ice Shield because I didn't have uh, any other real plays. My opponent just went very, very wide. So my first turn was uh, playing down, I think it was a Aglovale with one core on it. My opponent then summoned the um, Dark Spider that when attacking, you remove a core. So Dark Spider swung, put me to four, and removed my core. The next turn, I didn't have a spirit in hand, actually. So this is game three. So I had to pay five and play my mothership. My opponent then goes... Um, Camelot Knight, Camelot Knight, Camelot Knight into a one cost purple card and then just swung out with everything. I had the Ice Shield for that turn, but I didn't have the Infernal Curse Dragon for the turn after and I didn't have any other ways to set up fully walling my opponent out. I had enough uh, cores to play out an Axe Spider, I think, and put it to three cores, but I didn't have enough cores to suppression and I don't even think I had the suppression. So I ended up losing in game three pretty quickly. We played pretty aggressively against each other and I just didn't, I couldn't wall out against that kind of uh, aggression right there. So that was unfortunate. But going into round five, I got the W versus purple. That one was a 2-0 finish. It was very, very straightforward. He just couldn't out the Axe Spider. And he couldn't out the board in general. I think he did eventually out the Axe Spider with a Dream Bomb. But the rest of my board was too powerful. Um, after that, we had a round six W versus white spell slinger. That was a two to one win. And the purple cards in my deck helped me so much being able to start off the game in an aggressive manner, getting the extra card draw that I need to maintain with my opponent, constantly dropping Newman guards is crazy. It got to a point where we both had two Newman guards on board. So I swung with one Newman guard. He blocked with his Newman guard. We both got to draw three, ran three, and it just went crazy from there. I was able to establish a board. I, I uh, used Curse Dragon for the first time in game three, and the Curse Dragon combo is what got me the win. So uh, the W versus Spell Singer was fantastic, and that's one of the big reasons I swapped over the purple version of the deck was because you get access to that, that um, Curse Dragon combo, and that was really important for me because I didn't have another way to consistently out things like Dragon Ship. Um, uh, round seven, I got the W versus purple, and that's actually, that one was a 2-0 win as well. That one was pretty straightforward. It was 
um not one of the not one of the craziest games but it was one of the games where i bricked on axe spiders so i didn't have access to that so it wasn't a straightforward like simple win because it's uh for this deck against purple it was actually very difficult not having uh, an immortal body essentially on the board so that was kind of the big thing for for day one going into day two i was uh x2 so if i won my two games i had a chance to make top 32 and right away i played against the pterosaur deck which was my first pterosaur matchup of the uh of the tournament and i don't have a bad pterosaur match at all because i have the Things like the Beldegor, I can kind of wall them out of the early game with things like Brigid and slowing the game down and getting myself into that perfect like uh, late game because they don't have crazy crazy defense because a lot of my cards have armor red or they can kind of float into Beldegors and stuff. So I can I can have and mount and attack against Red Pterosaur, but unfortunately I just lost in game three. We uh we were close to time. We had like ten minutes going into game three. It was a fantastic player. He was amazing, uh, and we had an amazing game. It was one of the most intense matches that I played all day. Uh, but it kind of uh, it kind of came down to came down to the wire first of all, and then it came down to him having uh, it was one attack that I couldn't block because uh, I had to holy elixir and use one core off of an axe spider to restand an axe spider and a derm dido I believe, and he responded with a volcanic break to kill the axe spider. So that's just kind of how it goes. Sometimes you can't always keep axe spider immortal, but that matchup was insane. Uh, and then going into my round nine, I played against another red pterosaur and. I was able to take that win 2-0. Uh, so, uh, establishing a Netherworld's Depths and establishing things like uh, Brigid against him, I was able to Brigid first, <clears throat> block his Pterosaur attack with my Axe Spider, and then block his... Um, he swung with a, a 1k that went up to 5k. So I blocked with my... my Brigid to initially just like um, trade with it, but then I decided to suppression the attack so I could continue to lock down his board. So I suppression the attack and I didn't die. It went up to 8k so I could wall out the rest of his attacks. I locked down his Gagano Rex and then going into my next turn, that's when I summoned out my Buffalong Bill. Uh, put the cores on the Buffalong Bill, swung with the Brigid, locked, kept that Gagano Rex locked down, and then bounced back some of his other board. And he just wasn't able to mount a, a, a consistent enough aggressive board after that to kind of get through all the ice shields that I saw. So it was a it was a crazy tournament i have a good matchup kind of against everything but it was kind of a one loss against yellow one loss against purple and one loss against red so i do wish i had a little bit more um play testing with this deck and i do think i could have overcame some of my shortcomings that i found during the tournament but the tournament altogether was fantastic and honestly this deck is crazy it's so much fun to play and it's so easy to make it like an aggro deck you protect yourself crazy well with your with your spells i don't play a lot of the purple removal like we were talking about before that kind of just takes cards off my opponent's boards but i take cards off my opponent's boards in the battle step so that's kind of the battle trick of this or that's the trick of this deck and that's kind of where it stands but before i ramble on too long about the event and everything like that this is gonna be jamasa with opus gaming and i'm out take care you guys